ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد Praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We seek His help, His forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides will never be led astray And so whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can guide Him I bear witness that there is no God but Allah The one having no partner And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is His messenger All you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared and die not except in the state of Islam O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from a single person, and from him he created his mates, and from both of them he created many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off the relations of the womb. Surely Allah is ever and all watching over you. O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear him and speak the truth. He will rectify your affairs and forgive your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah, his messenger, has an, indeed achieve, achieved a great achievement. Dear brothers and sisters, um, a couple of weeks before Ramadan came, uh, myself and some of my students, we were reviewing some of the D1 of Imam Shafi'i. And Imam Shafi'i has a lot of poetry, which we know uh, has a lot of benefits. So we were studying his poetry, and we came across a particular poem that had a lot of benefit. And so we, well, I thought I would share some of that benefit with you uh, that we discussed in our class. So the poem in it, he advises us on how intelligent servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conduct themselves in this world. It reads, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ عِبَادٍ فُطَنَا قَلَّقُ الدُّنْيَ وَخَافُ الْفِتَنَا نَظَرُوا فِيهَا فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ فِي حَيِّ الْوَطَنَا جعلوها نجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا. The meaning of which is that indeed for Allah are some intelligent slaves who divorce this world and its wicked ways. When they looked deeply into this world, they came to understand that verily this world was not their native land. So they made this world like the ocean's blue, and they took righteous deeds and ships to sail through. Dear brothers and sisters, fasting in the month of Ramadan is one of those righteous deeds. It's one of those ships which the intelligent servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses as a means to convey them from the shores of this world to the shores of the next world in anticipation for his most generous reward. Sahil ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu narrates from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentions that in paradise, the hadith that talks about this particular gate or door in paradise, it's called a rayyan. And he says that in Jannah, there's a gate called a rayyan, a gate which the Sa'i Moon, the fasting people, will enter from. No one else except them will enter this gate. It will be announced, where are the Sa'i Moon? Where are the fasting people? And the fasting people will stand. No one will enter that gate except them, the gate called Ar-Riyan. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to ask ourselves a question, a very important question, and that is, how do we prepare for this month that we're in right now? You know, um, in this society we have something called the weekend warrior. I was talking to my daughter about the weekend warrior on my way to the football, and she didn't know what it meant. So the weekend warrior, for those who don't know what it means, the weekend warriors are those people who they go to work during the week, and they work in the cubicles, right? They sit in front of the computers, and uh, you might find them, in the, you know, in front of the coffee stations, 
with the donuts and the, the pastry on, right? And then when Saturday comes, they hit the gym, right? They hit the gym, or they hit the trail, or they go hang left. They do something, but when they hit it, they go all out, right? So you see them in the gym, you know, with their Nike gear on now because they took off the suit, and they're lifting weights really hard, right? They go to the court, they're playing ball for about two or three hours, right? What, what happens to them? On Monday, they're, they're at the hospital, right? They, they, they pulled every muscle, right? They, they destroyed their knees, they destroyed their ankles, right? Because all throughout the week, they didn't do anything to prepare for that vigorous exercise that they were about to undertake. So, in Ramadan, we have Ramadan warriors, right? These are those uh, brothers and sisters who, unfortunately, they didn't fast the whole year long. They didn't fast. They didn't get up at night to, to pray. So what happened when the month came? Their bodies went into shock. And if you were to ask, we have some Muslim doctors who they gave us some very interesting statistics. They said that on an average day, a Muslim doctor might see about five to seven patients. But on the first day of Ramadan, that number triples. <laughs> This is the Ramadan word. Now the Ramadan word actually in the history of Islam is a very rare occurrence. It's kind of a new phenomenon. If we were to be uh, alive about a thousand years ago, sitting with one of the companions or the students of the companions, about three or four months before Ramadan came, we would have found them in the masjid with their hands raised in dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them to reach this month. So the preparation for the month was beginning before the month came. There are different ways that you can warm up for the month of Ramadan. And if you didn't do it before, it's okay. There's still some things you can do when it's, when it's here. So one of the ways is by increasing the frequency of our dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran with the verse before talking about Ramadan and the verse after it also speaking about Ramadan. He mentions, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانُ الرَّجِيمُ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ He says that, and when my servant asks you, O Muhammad, concerning me, indeed I am near. I respond to the invocation of the supplicant when he calls upon me. So let them respond to me in obedience and believe in me that they may be guided. So the month of Ramadan is a time for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by increasing the frequency and the amount of dua that we make along with the acts of obedience. Um, every goodness that we receive on this earth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from amongst the most unique, the most exclusive blessings that we receive is this month of Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, there was a khutbah that we had not too long ago, um, and the topic was on Hajj. There was a brother in the khutbah who made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless him to make the Hajj that year. And at that particular time, he didn't have the means or the money to make this uh, the pilgrimage, but he had a sincere dua. And so he made that dua. The night, uh, that particular night, more than one brother came to, the, came to this brother with an offer of help because they had heard that he wanted to make Hajj. Alhamdulillah, he made Hajj that year. And we believe that that was the result of his sincere dua. So this is to emphasize the importance of dua, even especially rather during this month. So the early generations from this ummah, they would make dua six months after Ramadan asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the deeds that they did during Ramadan. So, from the Ramadan where they were, six months out, they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the deeds that they did during that month. And then the next six months out, they were asking or making dua that Allah bless them to reach the next Ramadan. So this is the example that we have, and if we're looking to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's one that we should follow. So preparing. How should we prepare? How did we prepare? So, when we have guests coming to your home, we all have guests, we know what we do. So we start cleaning the house. 
It's our vacuum in the carpets. It's our dust in the shelves. Scrub in the sinks, scrub in the toilets, and bathroom. We do everything in our power to make sure that that house is looking good. This is our yani, Ramadan, when it comes, we should do the same thing. However, the emphasis should be more on just the physical surroundings. It's a time that we should now start practicing a way to scrub away the sins, scrub away those things which pro prohibited us from doing things that we knew we were supposed to do. Those things that, uh, the bad habits that we had, we should be trying to clean those things up and get rid of those things. Those things which we know were displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was a time for us really to be working on that. Listen to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa speaking about those people that don't want to clean up for Ramadan. He says that whoever doesn't desist from speaking falsehood and acting upon it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need that they desist from their food or their drink. So the biggest downfall we find from the weekend warrior is that you know, they didn't warm up properly. And because of their ill preparation or their lack of preparation, then it led to all sorts of injuries and harm. Similarly, when fasting, some people only do it once a year when Ramadan comes. And this makes their bodies very foreign to going without food and drink. And this is, it makes it very difficult for them. They also haven't practiced much cleaning or, or uh, spiritual cleansing. So, throughout the whole year when they come to Ramadan, even though we know that the doors of paradise are open and the, the, the doors or the gates of hell are closed and the shayateen are fettered or chained, but because they didn't do that, that training before, then their next is the one that comes and starts beckoning, to do, beckoning them to do things which they know they're not, they're not supposed to do. So, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us or let us increase in the frequency of our du'as during this month. And we're asking Him to, to bless us to increase in our acts of obedience during this month. And we're asking Him to give us strength over our nafs. One of the scholars said in a poem that he wrote, he mentioned that, uh, he said, Oh you who aren't satisfied with sinning in the month of Rajab, so much so that you continue sinning in Sha'ban, the month of fasting has now come upon you. So do not convert it also to a month of sin. Dear brothers and sisters, we began the khutbah with mentioning fasting as a righteous deed, or as one of the, the ships mentioned in the poem of Imam Shafi. And I'd just like to conclude um, with another poem he describes another one of these important ships. Uh, this is the ship called the, the Night Prayer. And the night prayer is one of those ships that lead to noble things or noble heights. So he says, or I read rather, Bi qadr al kaddi tuqtasab al maali, wa man talab al ulla sahar al layali, wa man ram al ulla min ghayr kaddi aza al umra fi qalb al muhali. Karum al izza thumma tanam al layla, ya hus al bahr man talab al layali. He said, to the extent of your efforts, you will achieve noble heights. And whoever seeks nobility spends sleepless nights. Whoever desires nobility without stress and strain, they waste away their lives in vain. You desire nobility while at night you sleep. The ones who seek pearls are the ones who dive deep. So let's dive deep during the month of Ramadan. This month provides an opportunity, to, uh, opportunity for us to seek the pearls of this blessed month by reviving its nights and spending them in prayer and contemplation and recitation of the Qur'an. Try your best, brothers and sisters, to get your families up at night. For the virtues of Ramadan are many. There are many. And I'll end with just mentioning a few of them. So the virtues of fasting are great indeed. 
And one of the things reported in the authentic hadith is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen fasting for himself and he will reward it and multiply the reward without measure. He mentioned that fasting has no equal and the dua of the fasting person will not be refused. So this is another reason why we increase your, uh, 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 we increase our dua during this month. Also, the fasting person has two moments of joy. One when he breaks his fast and one when he meets his Lord. Fasting will intercede for a person on the day of judgment and will say, O oh Lord, I prevented him from his food and physical desires during the day, so let me intercede on his behalf. Also, fasting is a protection and a strong fortress that keeps a person safe from the fire. Whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will remove his face 70 years distance from the fire. It's a hadith collected by Ina Muslim. Also, whoever fasts one day seeking the pleasure of Allah, if that is his last day on this earth, will enter paradise. It's a uh, tradition collected by Imam Ahmed. Also, we mentioned Abrayyan, a gate through which those who fast will enter. No one will enter it except them. When they, when they have entered it, it will be locked and no one else will be able to go through. Ramadan, of course, is the month of the Qur'an, a month wherein there's a night that's better than a thousand months. When Ramadan begins, the gates of paradise are open and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are chained. Whoever fasts Ramadan, iman and muhtisaban, and out of faith and with hope of reward, all of their previous sins will be forgiven. And the final virtue I'm going to mention is that at the breaking of every fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses people to free and liberate from the hellfire. So brothers and sisters, let's be like those intelligent servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take fasting and night prayer as ships to sail through this dunya. For indeed, there are intelligent uh, servants or slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, let us be amongst them. Verily for Allah, there are some intelligent slaves who divorced this world and its wicked ways. They looked deeply into this world and came to understand that verily this world was not their native land. So they made this world like the oceans blue and took righteous deeds as ships to sail through. Ibadullah, inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsani wa itari bil qurba wa yanha amil fa'shari wal munkari wal bagri يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزدكم واستغفروه يغفر لكم واتقوه يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا واحد